Just 45 days ago, the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change presented a rescue plan for the climate, a plan that will only be carried out successfully if we embark on immediate action. The consequences of failing to act swiftly enough are unimaginable. Failure is unacceptable, and we must seize this moment before it's too late. This is our moment of truth, the test of our humanity. We have little time left. We've lost decades through insufficient action while year after year we've heard repeated warnings from climate scientists. Those warnings have now become our reality. With one degree of warming, we are already living in a changed climate, and each moment of delay heightens the risks of extreme drought, heat waves, and floods. So I have never been more worried about climate change than I am right now, but conversely, I also have great hope, hope that is inspired by people around the world taking and demanding climate action. This is the message that our leaders must hear. In 10 days time, governments will meet in Katowice at COP24, where the latest climate science and the IPCC special report needs to be met with a robust political commitment to action. Business as usual climate rhetoric will not be enough. In solidarity with the climate vulnerable, nations must lift their ambition and align their nationally determined contributions with the 1.5 degrees target. Governments asked for the IPCC report, and now they have to own it. They have nowhere to hide. For the nations of the CVF, their future is on the line. We have just over a decade to take the rapid action to avoid catastrophe, and we must take courage and hope from those who are leading the transformation. New Zealand has banned new offshore oil and gas exploration. In Korea, the country's coal capital, Cheongnam province, has committed to a coal phase-out. In the Hambach forest in Germany, we saw tens of thousands of people come together to defend their forest against coal mining. In New York, the state's attorney is suing ExxonMobil for fraudulently downplaying climate risk to the detriment of us all. Investors and banks are also increasing, turning their backs on fossil fuels. What all of this means is that we are witnessing the birth of a new era, the end of the fossil fuels. But that end can't come soon enough for those on the front lines of climate change, for those who face the prospect of losing their island homes or who will increasingly be at risk from food insecurity or the threat of super typhoons. Today, the Climate Vulnerable Forum meets to take stock of the IPCC report and demand a response to its findings. I stand by them, emboldened by their courage, strengthened by their resilience, and more determined than ever to help bring the climate action they and ultimately every one of us needs. Today's generation of leaders might be the last politicians who are aware of the risks and still have the time and possibility to act. They must do so immediately.